Like humans, regular dental checkups are essential for your horse and their well-being, especially because some horses with advanced dental disease will suffer in silence. Joining me now is dental expert Neil Townsend, veterinary surgeon. So Neil, regular checkups like this are essential, but as a horse owner, are there any signs that we can look out for that may flag up a problem? Absolutely. Really the first thing we'd be looking for are problems whenever the horse is being ridden, so problems when they're on the bit, uh, head tilting uh, or excessively shaking their head. Really to the more severe dental problems where the horse is actually having a few problems eating, so chewing slower than other horses or uh, beginning to sort of just chew slight bits of food and then drop them out, sort of quitting semi-masticated bits of, bits of hay. Um, and then eventually that can lead to, to weight loss. So who should you call then, Neil, if your horse needs a checkup or help with one of these problems? I think there's a variety of people you can call. I think vets are ideally situated uh, to deal with these problems. They look at the horse as a whole as well as just the mouth. Also trained uh, dental technicians who have uh, passed either the Beaver BVDA exam or the WW Catterkey 2 exam that are also uh, able to, to sort of treat certain problems within the horse's mouth. And is there anyone who shouldn't be conducting this kind of examination? I think there are dental technicians out there who haven't undergone any qualifications and they're not legally allowed to carry out the same uh, procedures as those that have been qualified uh, or veterinary surgeons. And what sort of things should an owner expect at a dental examination? I think what you'd be looking for in an examination is a thorough exam, both of the outside structures of the head and then looking at all the individual teeth and all the soft tissues within the mouth. A really detailed examination is what you should expect. So in a routine dental examination, uh, things that you'll be looking out for are symmetry of the face, so uh, the muscles on, on either side of the face, so on the sides and also on the top. Feeling down the cheeks on either side to see if there's any food trapped uh, in those areas. Uh, and then, then you'll be looking at the incisor teeth, which you can see just by lifting up the, the lips on either side. There should be six incisors on the upper and the lower. And then looking to see the movement of the jaw from side to side and see if it's symmetrical to, to both sides. Mm -hmm. And that's really the extent of what you can see without putting a gag on in the horse. So um, that's why it's so limited to just that bit. So he's had a little bit of sedation, so we'll put a gag on and have a bit look further back in his mouth. So once we've got the gag on, that's our ideal time now that we can have a feel of what's going on in the mouth. So uh, I always have one hand on the gag and then putting my hand in and feeling the outsides of the upper teeth and the insides of the lower teeth uh, the whole way around all four quadrants in the mouth and just feeling for any sharp points or any fractured teeth uh, or any food that's accumulated in between the, in between the teeth. So once we've had a, a feel inside the mouth, the next stage is really having a look inside um, and it's ideal with a headstand that you can have both of your hands free. Uh, you can then look inside the mouth and you can see all the way back to the very back of the mouth looking for any points uh, or any bits of food that are still accumulated in there. The next stage of the exam is pretty much as your, as your dentist would do, is to, to look at the surface of, of each of the teeth with a mirror, mm -hmm. um, just to check for any evidence of fracture or if the teeth have become dead so they've uh, got pulps exposed and also to look in between uh, each of the spaces in between to make sure there's no food packed uh, in between any of, those, any of those areas. For the routine rasping, it's really just taking off those, those sharp enamel points off the outside of the upper teeth and the inside of the lower teeth. And it's ideal when they're sedated on a headstand that nothing is moving around whilst you're, uh, whilst you're doing that. So you turn the, the rasp on whenever you're looking in. And then as you're going, you can have a feel afterwards to, to make sure that you're not taking any, anything uh, too much off those teeth. So why does the anatomy of a horse make these examinations necessary? So the anatomy of horse's teeth is, is quite unique. An adult horse can have anywhere between 36 and 44 teeth, and the eruption sequence of those is quite complicated. There can be multiple baby teeth in the mouth along with adult teeth, and they've got very, very different functions. The incisor teeth are used for sort of biting and pulling mm -hmm. at the grass, whereas the cheek teeth or the molars, as we probably know them in human terms, uh, they're used for grinding up the food uh, into small particles uh, so that the horse can swallow them. And why do they develop problems, Neil? 
I think one of the more common problems that we see is the development of sharp points and that will happen in every horse and that, that really happens because the upper jaw sits about 10% wider than the lower jaw. Uh, so naturally when the horse is grinding they develop these points on the outside. Coupling that with a lot of horses are kept stabled, it means that they don't chew in, a very, in a much, as much of a circular motion as a horse that's kept out at grass. And what are the most common problems you would say you treat? So some of the more common problems are the development of sharp enamel points, so on the outside of the upper teeth and the inside of the lower teeth. Other things that can be going on in there, you could have tooth decay or caries of the teeth, um, which can lead to fracture of some of the teeth. And if the horse is chewing more on one side than the other, you can see developments of abnormalities of wear. And is there anything owners can do to avoid potential problems? I think regular checkups and regular routine dentistry are extremely important for horses. Great, thank you Neil. And for more information on this topic, please visit the Animal Welfare Foundation website.